All right, guys, so it's time to talk about some real politics, right? My favorite subject, breaking down the game within the game of politics, because there is a lot of strategic aspects that are going on with this infrastructure package. And as you guys know, or some of you guys should know, the infrastructure package, the bipartisan $1.2 trillion plan passed in the Senate yesterday. Okay, uh, 19 Republicans, including Mitch McConnell, uh, got on board with that. And I think it's important to um, explain to you guys how this bill is going to proceed forward, right? How this process is going to go moving from here and the chess game that is currently happening between the Biden administration, the Democrats in the House and the Republicans uh, in the Senate in regards to this legislation, right? Including Biden's $3.5 trillion families plan that the Democrats say they want to do through reconciliation now i i gotta say guys that there's just not that many right-wing commentators that are gonna break this stuff down right but i'm gonna do that for you because i think it's important that you know everyday people understand that politics is ultimately a game right and that a lot of these decisions that are being made are being made strategically right so these are the 19 republicans that uh signed up for this bipartisan infrastructure package the 1.2 trillion dollar plan that's going to have 550 billion dollars in new spending now the congressional budget office estimate that is going to uh result in a deficit of 250 billion dollars over 10 years i believe now this is supposed to be infrastructure infrastructure okay however there's been criticism from the right on this bill right in regards to the potential um mileage tax that could come <laughs> years down the road i've done a video on this already uh, the reporting requirements for cryptocurrency that the market seemed to not really care about because Bitcoin is steadily going up. And guys, let me let me mention that is a sign of the actual teeth of a legislation, right? When people want to talk about, oh, this is going to be bad for X, Y, and Z. If the market continues to climb, <laughs> despite the fact that people are saying that it's supposed to be bad, that tells you how much teeth that legislation actually has in regards to that industry uh bitcoin has continued to climb so i don't think it's the crypto stuff is as bad as people are trying to make it out to be to be quite honest with you but again i can be wrong i'm just going with the market reaction but yes there are aspects of this bill that are being criticized from the right because they're saying that you know it's not really infrastructure right even though the bipartisan senators are saying that this is an infrastructure infrastructure bill and on his face, I mean, if you look at the outline of what the money's actually being spent on, just the outline, it appears to be as infrastructure as it gets. However, the devil is always in the details. It's a 2,000 page bill, okay? And I can definitely see if, if you actually read the bill, right? You may find some stuff in there that you might not like, okay? So I, I, I kind of get it. And it's up to you guys if you want to read the bill or read more about it to determine whether or not you think this is legitimate spending on real infrastructure or not. But like I said, that's some of the criticisms on the right in terms of the opposition. Trump is also opposed to this, right? And one of the reasons why Trump is opposed to it is because he feels like the Republican Party is giving Biden a W, okay? He's giving Biden an unnecessary W and he wants uh, the Republicans to wait to after 2022 so that they can use more leverage. And I actually agree with Trump on this, okay? Because to me, I, I think it is a slap in the face for Mitch McConnell to get on board with this legislation, uh, especially considering how Trump basically wanted to do the same thing under his administration. McConnell said no. And then, you know, basically decide to spend more money after we've spent all this money that we spent in the last year. Well, you could just wait to 2022 and get more leverage because again you know infrastructure spending is a bipartisan issue both sides want it we just want it done right okay so i think trump is right on that but i also have to mention that trump is probably salty about the fact that again mcconnell uh did not want to do infrastructure spending under him but for whatever reason is doing it under biden okay so yes trump has justifiable reasons to be mad and with that being said this is where we kind of get into the game of politics, right? Because again, 19 GOP senators voted for this thing, right? And as you can notice here, if you look at the list of names, most of these guys are either anti-Trump, <laughs> they're retiring, or I think they're just uh, taking a gamble here, like uh, Lindsey Graham, <laughs> okay? <laughs> really, in my opinion, it is a interesting character in politics, but that's another video for another day, Okay. So the other senators who did not vote for this, right, who did not vote in favor of this, um, 
in my opinion, I, I think a lot of it does come from the fact that um, not voting for this seems to keep their alignment with Trump. They already know that because Mitch McConnell got on board with it, which I, I am surprised that he did, because Mitch McConnell says, yes, they know that it was going to pass. So from a political standpoint, right, in, in terms of alignment with Trump, there was really no reason to vote yes on the bill, okay, knowing that the Senate already had to vote. So I just want you guys to keep that in mind, okay, about how the game of politics actually works, okay? Optics are everything. Now, a lot of people are criticizing this uh, bill and saying that the Republicans, 19 of them, got on board with the Democrats' socialist agenda, right? They got on board with the family plan, okay? Because this is a Trojan horse to pass the $3.5 trillion family plan through reconciliation that the Democrats say that they want to do, right? Chuck Schumer has actually started the budget reconciliation uh, process in the Senate, okay, to outline the budget requirements. And Nancy Pelosi has basically said she's not bringing this bipartisan infrastructure bill to the floor without the $3.5 trillion families plan being passed in the Senate as well, okay? So Nancy Pelosi says she's holding up that legislation. However, the moderate Democrats in the House are basically telling Nancy bruh, um, you, we should just vote for the $1.2 trillion infrastructure plan, the bipartisan plan. Let's just push that forward and forget about the family's plan, okay? Let, let's focus on that later. Let's do that. So Nancy is already facing pressure from the Democrats to basically abandon the $3.5 trillion family plan. And with that being said, guys, again, this is where the strategic aspect comes from because I'm gonna tell you guys, Mitch McConnell is not a dummy, right? I don't necessarily like Mitch. I'm not necessarily a fan of Mitch, but I watch Mitch a lot and I study him a lot because the dude is hella smart and he's been around politics a long, long, long time. There's no way in hell that Mitch McConnell would sign up for this bill if he believed that the Democrats would be able to pass that $3.5 trillion infrastructure plan, the family's plan. There's no way, okay? What Mitch McConnell ultimately is is thinking here is that there's a couple scenarios in which none of them he could actually lose or put it this way it's unlikely that they could lose considering what mitch mcconnell and the, the moderate bipartisan gop senators really want out of this thing okay because there is incentive for um the gop right to for some senators to appear to be more moderate right as we become more polarized as a country um being moderate, you know, there's going to be a market for that, right? Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema have clearly outlined that that's what they're trying to do. And a lot of these GOP senators are also going to try to get on board with that too and say, well, Democrats and Republicans can work together. But McConnell knows that ultimately um, that $3.5 trillion plan will not pass because Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, right, the ones who want to appear to be moderate on the Democrat side, are never going to go for it when it comes to the budget reconciliation process. And I am 100% sure that there is a backdoor agreement that they're not going to sign up for that, which means that essentially that bill is dead in the water, okay? So there's a few scenarios here in terms of how this can work out and whether or not this legislation, whether that's the $1.2 trillion um, infrastructure package, the bipartisan plan or $3.5 trillion uh, families plan can move forward. And I want to outline that real quick because, again, this is kind of what Mitch McConnell is thinking, in my opinion. So... One of the scenarios that could happen is, is that um, Nancy Pelosi, okay, uh, could be forced to bring the $1.2 trillion plan to the floor, okay? And um, what can happen is, is that at that point, the progressives have already threatened to um, nuke that, right? They're saying, unless we get the $3.5 trillion with that $1.2 trillion, we're not going to vote for it, right? We're going to say no. Now, if the progressives say no, if they nuke this, they essentially it nukes the whole thing the whole process is going to be done and nothing will get passed right and to mcconnell that's a desirable outcome because at the very least he can say well we we tried the progressives didn't want it so hey you know we tried and then biden ultimately gets nothing done okay so another scenario is that uh nancy pelosi again is forced to bring that 1.2 trillion dollar uh bill to the floor and the progressives go along with it, right? The whole Democrat party goes along with it, or put it this way, even if the progressives are against it, there are enough Republicans that are for it in the House to make it pass the House. 
Now, if it passes the House, right, it's already passed the Senate, Biden signs it. Again, that's a W for Biden. It is. But it's also kind of a W for the moderate Republicans as well in the sense that, again, they're appearing to actually be willing to work with the Biden administration. OK, that has some value to it, even in our ultra polarized society. Right. That's the way McConnell is looking at this. Now, the situation where McConnell loses, which I think is very unlikely, but again, it could happen, is that Joe Biden decides that, you know what, since we have the one point two trillion dollar bill passed in the Senate, we're going to go whole hog on getting everything that his administration says that they want. Right. The three point two trillion dollars and a 1.2 trillion so what happens is that at that point he could actually show his hand and force joe manchin and kirsten cinema to vote yes on that legislation right he could do that obviously as the progressives that are going to get on board with the 3.5 trillion in the house now you just need all the democrats to get on board with it in the, in the senate if he can force them to get on board with it right then in that scenario they get everything that they want and that's essentially the scenario that a lot of Republicans are saying that they're afraid of. However, that scenario is just very, very unlikely because up until this point, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema have not shown a willingness to get on board with the progressive priorities of the Democrat Party. And McConnell knows that. Also, Biden has not shown a willingness to actually make them get on board with the progressive agenda of the Democrat Party. So at this point, it's almost like that $3.5 trillion bill is dead in the water as long as um, Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema maintain their ground, right? To say, listen, we're, we're not going to sign up for this. And again, this is what makes this such interesting politics. Because again, a lot of people are wondering, why did GOP get on board with this? Why are they doing this? Why are they doing that? Well, the reason why is because they know that Biden's not going to be able to get that $3.5 trillion, right? That's why they got on board with it. And, and that's just kind of how the game within the game of politics works, right? So whether you agree with the deal or not, right? And there's reasons to be critical of the bipartisan infrastructure package. I just find it interesting, the whole politics of this stuff, right? The chess game up around this. So I hope you guys have a better understanding of the possible scenarios and how Mitch McConnell is actually thinking about um, these scenarios. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.